Hello, I'm Phil Nash, developer advocate for Sealine. I'd love to take you through what's new in Sealine 2018.2. We're going to start with the language engine. Sealine has always used its own parser and resolver for understanding your C code, and with good reason. Providing insights on unfinished code that's constantly changing is a different problem to compiling it. But sometimes that does mean there's a difference between what we see and what the compiler sees. Well, now we can have the best of both worlds. In this release, we're introducing an alternate ClangD based engine for errors and warnings. We consider this experimental for now, as it is just a start. You can configure it here, setting which warnings you'd like enabled, but it has been pre configured to work well with CLine's own warnings and errors. So now both language engines work in parallel. So results may appear at slightly different times. It is on by default for Mac and for Linux. For Windows, the default's off for now due to an issue that came up there, but we do hope to resolve that and enable it by default in coming updates. Building on top of ClangD, and therefore also not available by default on Windows for now, is a clever new inspection. This can help when you have two or more arguments of the same type in a function call. Without type information to help us, we fall back to looking at the names of the arguments and compare those with the names of any variables we're passing in. If they don't match, but there is a close match from an argument in a different position, a warning will now hint that you may be passing them out of order. Note that some names, such as single letter names, disable this inspection to avoid too many false positives. We've previously introduced integration with Valgrind Memcheck. In this release, we've added the ability to export Memcheck results to an XML file and import them back in again at another time. But we've also now added integration with the Google sanitizers, the address, undefined behavior, thread, and memory sanitizers. For example, here we'll enable UBSAN in CMake. Now we need to do it for both compiler and linker stages, and this will instrument the code. And now when we run code that has detectable undefined behavior, CLine collects the output from the sanitizer and displays it in its own tab in the run window, just like it does with Valgrind. And now to the build system. This release sees support for Gradle C++ projects. This is our next stage in opening up the build system away from being coupled to CMake. Now when opening a Gradle project, if you check the auto import option, it will quickly deduce build targets for you. Otherwise you can set them up yourself. Now there's currently no normal build button. Instead, to build a Gradle project, open the Gradle tool window and execute the build task from there. We hope to fully integrate this in a future release. There are some other limitations to this support. In particular, we only support the newer style Gradle C++ projects. For some sample projects, see the Gradle Native Samples repository, or the article C++ support on the Gradle blog. In other non-CMake build system news, CLine can now also open compilation database JSON files. This is a common format that can be output from a number of build systems, including CMake, Bazel, Ninja, and even Visual Studio with a plugin. Projects open this way have full code completion, navigation, refactoring, and analysis. But for now, you can't build or debug them, except for compiling single files, as we'll see in a moment. We do hope to add that ability later. But we also have a few improvements to CMake support too, starting with the ability to compile a single source file. As just mentioned, this also works for compilation DB projects. And we now discover all included files that are within the project root from the source files and treat them as project files. So no need to add headers to your CMake projects anymore. You'll still get full code insights on all of these files. CLine allows you to configure external tools that can be run from the IDE. And a number of macros are provided that expand to build or project specific values. We've now added a set of CMake related macros to this list. Now the editor, and starting with performance. We continue our ongoing push to improve performance, especially by eliminating freezes and other issues, and several more of these have been fixed. We're also introducing a variant of our indentation process used when reformatting code, which relies only on the Lexa. This can be significantly faster, but it may give slightly different results. So if you encounter any issues, please report them, of course. 
but you can also revert back to the full parser implementation if you need to. To do that, go to the settings registry and find this Lexa key to disable it. One of the most requested new features across all IntelliJ based products over the last year has been support for the touch bar on recent MacBook Pros. With this release, that support is finally here. You can build, run, and debug from the touch bar, as well as committing to and pulling from version control. Many other controls are also included, but these are context sensitive and customizable. For more details, take a look at the post on the IntelliJ Idea blog. As part of the IntelliJ family, CLine benefits from some language agnostic tools, and this release sees some improvements and some additions. First, with version control support. Files with merge conflicts are now grouped together to make them easier to deal with. You can also now have as many log tabs open as you want, each with their own filters. And from a log tab, you can preview a diff. For this release, CLine includes the database tools plugin, enabled by default. This is no lightweight plugin. It effectively incorporates the whole of DataGrip, a dedicated IDE for database management, for all major database systems and quite a few smaller ones too. You can work with database tables visually, as well as executing SQL statements against them. This is a great new addition to the family of additional tools now built into CLine. A few other updates to note. We've made some fixes to LLDB support and updated it to version 6. CMake has been updated to version 3.12. And we now support WSL background processes. So that's been a quick tour of some of the new features and updates in CLine 2018.2. As usual, there are plenty of other fixes and other changes. Check out the blog post, and don't forget, you can download a 30-day free trial now.